So today we're going to be using Sketchpad to create a Salvador Dali inspired surrealist work. Here are some tools. This is the moving pointer tool. This is the cropping tool for the entire composition. This pencil tool also drops down to other kinds of drawing tools. This rectangle tool is a bunch of, of the kind of shape tools that you could use. And then there are other ones as well, but those are the main ones we're going to be using. Down here are the outline and color fills and the sizes. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna draw a rectangle because um, I could zoom out and see the whole paper, but I wanna make sure that when I do some fills later that I am reaching the edge of my paper when it comes to outlines. Once I do my rectangle, I'm gonna do another one inside and I'm gonna make it look three-dimensional. That part is optional. Um, and you can draw it like you would draw a three-dimensional box on paper. And by the way, if you want to do this on paper, you can. But I'm going to use the line tool and I'm gonna draw diagonal lines coming from three corners that go backwards. So there's one diagonal line, the line across. Click where my second diagonal line would meet and then I have to retrace that line make a third diagonal line for the back and the side so if you want to um, do the other way of drawing a cube uh, you could draw another rectangle on top of it and just connect the back sides um, but like I said this part's optional but if you like to do this it kind of helps it with how surreal it looks once I have my shape, double click to have the line tool stop from drawing another line. I'm next going to draw a tree. So in the persistence, persistence of memory, um, there's a melting clock kind of on a block and then on a tree. So I'm going to draw a tree and see how the bottom of my tree kind of lines up with the bottom of my box. Uh, so that way it seems like it's kind of sitting on the same area of land or space. If you don't like a mark you make, you can always put some do. On the very left side, there's that undo arrow. I just control Z that because sometimes the keyboard shortcuts are a little easier. But that fourth icon down on the left side, that arrow is the undo. Now that I have my tree, I'm going to make a horizon line going from the edge of my rectangle behind all the way touching, touching my rectangle on this side, going across, touching my tree, and then going on the other side and across. So I've made the line that now separates the sky from the earth, but behind my objects because I'm trying to make it look like in real space. Now I'm going to draw two circles that kind of look like melting clocks but don't make it into a clock. So I'm gonna draw one that looks like it's kind of melting off of the box. And I'm gonna draw one that looks like it's kind of melting on the tree. Remember yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but we wanna do something that kind of looks surreal like Salvador Dali. I'm going to now white out those lines that are inside of my clock so that they don't look see-through change it to white. I'm going to go ahead and do that and kind of erase it. And you can pause this video at any time. You can also skip ahead. As long as your artwork resembles a surreal Salvador Dali type painting, it doesn't have to have all of these elements in it. I kind of want you just to be inspired by him and to be inspired um, to make it look kind of surreal. So you just use the zoom tool because I was having a hard time seeing what I was erasing. So I want you to imagine what else could be melting? So in the original painting, The Persistence of Memory, there are clocks. 
Um, what else is circular that could be melting? It could be something that is already kind of flexible or the fun thing would be to do something that is not flexible. Um, so I'm going to do a tire, like a bike tire, and I'm gonna do a pizza. But you could do anything that is circular. Or if you want to draw other shapes, you can do that too. But have something melting. I'm trying to think what else could be melting. What if it was like a DVD or a Frisbee or another kind of tire, like a tire on a car? Um, maybe look around your house and see what else is circular that you could make it look like it's melting. After this, I'm going to start thinking about color. And like for my pizza, I'm just gonna use color to make it look like a pizza. So remember, take your time. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. And if you want to fill shapes in with color, you have to make sure lines touch. So if I was drawing those, um, those lines and they didn't quite touch each other and I wanted to color them in individually, it would be difficult. Oops. So make sure that when you are using your paint bucket, click it and put pixel fill. Now there's lots of ways you can fill in your objects. Fill has lots of different things you can do. One is like a basic color. There are patterns you can fill into a space. Um, there are kind of like ombre colors you can fill into a space. So explore those and fill in your shapes with different colors and patterns. Um, and it might actually make it help it look more surreal, more kind of dreamlike or impossible or nonsensical. All right, I'm gonna do some more interesting fills. So I'm gonna take a linear feel, fill. I'm gonna pick one that has browns in it for my tree. Yeah, see, it has a slight kind of dark to light color. Then I think for my boxes, I'm gonna do a more pattern fill just for fun. So you can see that once you click on the pattern, it will appear bigger in that fill box so you can see what it looks like. And see how it only went into that one area and not behind the wheel? That's because it's a shape of its own. I'm gonna pick another texture for the another side of the box. I like how these are so detailed. And then, ooh, I don't love that. I think I'm gonna undo. And I'm going to do a, just a normal color. If you don't love the color, you, down here you can click and drag around to find a color that makes sense for you. Okay. Now I have my objects filled. I wanna do the sky. I think I'm going to do this one. This kind of reminds me of like a dark sunset. Cool. And I'm gonna do that little gap, even though it's not gonna fill correctly. It's kind of like a sunset within a sunset which works because it's a surreal work of art. So whatever you do, you can add more texture to it. You can fill it with different textures that already exist in this pattern menu. Um, but once you're done, remember to save. You can do that by either taking a screenshot or in a second, I'll show you how to save on here as well but make sure you don't exit out. That represents my grass. <laughs> okay, so looking over here, this is the save, or it says export. So click on that. 
and you can save as a JPEG, or if you push save, you'll have to go through kind of saving as a PNG or a JPEG. I'm gonna make mine a little bigger. And then you should see it is saved to your device. Make sure it's there before you exit out. <laughs>